reviewing the new motorized slider. Let's roll. <laughs> This is Bobby the Booze, and today we are going to be talking about the newer motorized slider. Now, first off the bat, let me just say a couple of things about the company newer. Um, they continue to surprise me with the quality of their products. And I'm not just saying that seriously, like I got a bunch of newer crap right there from uh, boom mic stands to light stands, um, stuff for a shoulder rig, and now this. And like, let me tell you, I'm very happy with my purchase. So to start off from the back, it's made of carbon fiber, which you have no idea how much lighter it is when a slider is made of carbon fiber. And I got this last week and I had a short film shoot uh, this last weekend where I was DPing and I put this thing through the test and let me tell you, it held up. So in the, in the case that you get with it, you get the slider itself, carbon fiber, like I said, uh, strapped on just like you know, most other slides. I'm gonna move this out of the way real quick. Um, right here, you got your three eighths mount. Uh, you can convert it to quarter, but like, I don't know why you do that because you want it to be more sturdy. Um, on the sides, you can make the legs open up so you can keep it on a tabletop and it has the mounts at the bottom if you want to put it. Because I had it between with one tripod and two light stands on either sides, and that's how I was rolling. And guess what? The setup I was using was my Pocket 6K, but already on the shoulder rig, which I just popped onto that, with a 16 to 40 Ingenue Optimal. So it weighed about 20 pounds, and this thing could take the weight. Hold on, I think I have a picture from the shoe. Let me pop it in. Yeah, that's the only picture I have with me using the slider. But uh, if you want to have another look at the rig, this is what the rig was like when I, and I had to use the Easy Rig Vario 5 to do it. Here's a picture of that. And now we're back to it. Okay, so let's uh, open this guy up and prop it on the table real quick so we can have a better look. Um, one thing, oh, my leg is very unscrewed. That's my AC's, well, second AC's fault. Um, I do like this upper feature, which I personally haven't seen on many sliders. I'm not exactly sure if a lot of them have it, but like I haven't seen, which is this middle bit here which allows you to get the uh, slider. Hold up, let me put it up. Oh, you yeah, see, I knew I wasn't doing this right. I never do this right on the first try. All righty, ready, settle? There you go. Right, so talking about the middle here, you got this bit that you can unscrew on this side. What that does is it frees up the these two things on the side now what you can do is if you move them left and right you can actually get the camera to automatically pan or pivot on an object depending on what you're looking for uh, doing which is pretty cool you know for a slider of this price range to have these kind of features um another thing is that if you're using it just like that which is for probably for most of the shoot that i was using I was just using the slider in this position with the rig, and I had a pretty heavy rig, so it was pretty stable. Because, you know, this is like that uh, Dana Dolly kind of system. It's, it's not a belt system, at least until you, not until you put the, the motor on. For, so for right now, I really enjoyed just using it like this. I had the camera on it, slowly moved it to the other side, and it was working. But uh, let's, uh, let's stick a camera on there real quick. So I'm just going to grab my... Black Magic Pocket 6K and grab a ball head. By the way, I highly recommend getting like a, well, not a cheap one, but like maybe an Andor or Manfro. Let's, let's just get some kind of uh, flat uh, tripod head for these instead of these ball heads. I don't know who makes these ones particularly, but they're not very good. And the camera, especially if you've got a heavy ring, uh, it just keeps falling off all the time. So it's always a good investment if you've got a slider. To use, <coughs> excuse me, to use uh, like a proper flathead rather than just plop it on one of these because they get loose. Even like right now, I bet whilst I'm doing this review, it's gonna get loose and do stupid shit. So I'm not gonna be very happy about it. Oh, that blocks my face. All right, we can move it a little. Right next, we're gonna be talking about this bit, which it comes with, which is of course the motor that you can connect. 
Now, when you open this up, there's a bunch of stuff in here, so be a little careful. You get uh, an LP6, no, NPF, sorry, NPF charger. You get a tiny NPF battery. Uh, this one here. Sorry, I've already opened mine up because I use it in my shoe. This is the motor itself. And I'll show you how you connect it in one second. Let me just go through what else is in the box. You get instructions. Luckily, they're in English as well and pretty easy to follow. So, uh, and like my second AC was able to put this thing together, although he has no experience with sliders before, in roughly about 20 minutes. And once you put on the big parts, um, it's easy to take the motor off and on again as many times as you want. Now, this here is the belt that drives the motor system to make the slider move. And we're gonna hook it up in just one second. All right, so I've hooked the motor up to the slider. Um, let me just try to show you what exactly it is. So. On the back, I put a way massive battery because these ones are charged and the little one I used up on the shoe last week. But basically, the motor goes here. There's a little strap to go around the battery, although it's, it's secure. It's not going to fall. And if you can have a look right here, you have these little screws, which screw on. You get this belt, and it gets a loop-de-loop -loop around the motor and goes down this way. So what that does is that's what controls the motor. Now, you do control the whole thing from your app which is great, although I think that the app needs a few improvements because right now it is basically meant, meant for photographers. And since I make video mainly, I wish because like, for example, the speed at which it goes from one end to the other end, even at um, 100% is like, mm, it's so slow that I can't use it. I want something faster. But I do understand why that is because when it does work, it is fairly loud. So that makes sense that um, it's meant for photographers or for like time lapses and things like that. Because I don't, like if you have audio in the, in the shot that you're trying to do for like a film or something, you will not be able to use that unless it's like not very close to where the mic is and everything. Now, let me try to turn the app on real quick. Okay, so I've paired it with my app and this is what I mean about the noise. See now, hang on. So as long as um, it's not close to where your mic is, which it is in this case right now, you'll be fine. But I think that the main intention behind it uh, is to be used uh, in a time-lapse mode because it does come with a bunch of these cables connected to your Sony's or Panasonic's or GH or wait, what am I missing? Pan Sony's or Panasonic or Canon's? Sorry. <laughs> And uh, I'm not sure, I, I don't know about that whole time lapse with the, where does it, the shutter button. I don't know about that. I don't do photography, I do a video. And to be very honest, so long, I can take the motor off and just use it as a proper slider. And it's great. It's great value for money. If I do want that motor thing running, I can hopefully, you can, you know, maybe watch this and update the app to have a faster mode going left and right. I could use it in MOS shots and that'll be great too. But those are my initial thoughts on this, and I'm fairly happy with my purchase because, you know, I, I, do, I don't want to spend crazy amounts of money on a slider and, you know, with the motion control and all of that. Like, I'm just, there's no point. There's really no point. And, like, another thing I'll keep saying is, like, that this is what I love about companies like Newer, that they show that just because something is cheaper, that it's a very high overpriced alternative, does not mean it has to be crap. And this is a fine example of it. So anyways, guys, um, let me know if you have any questions or any comments. And, you know, just like and subscribe and share. And I will see you in the next one. Okay, then. Bye.